is a one minute question, and we can start with the exclusion. Uh, Republican Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin, uh, in a bluish state, survived. Recall challenge and turn that state's financial picture around. Are there lessons in Wisconsin for Republicans in Connecticut? Absolutely. I was asked a question recently what governor would I talk to first if I were to gain the seat as governor? And it was Scott Walker. Absolutely. You don't back down. This is something I'm very familiar with, having fought unions in the private sector when I helped to build and run thousand room hotels for the Western Hotels. It is something that I fought locally in my own communities, in um, negotiating four different contracts, and it's something I've been fighting for the last 17 years, both in the House and the Senate. And I've never been afraid to take them on, and I've been many times threatened, uh, in fact. And so you don't back down, but you also know how to work with them, how to bring them to the table, have them understand that what you're doing is in their best interest. And right now, right now, state employees are about to lose their pensions because it's insolvent, it's going belly up, and if you sit down and talk to them about this and have them understand your policies are actually going to save their future interests, I think you can get somewhere. It's something I've done and it's Bye. something I can, I can do in the future. Thank you. It's a great lesson for us on many levels. Look, we have a lot of problems in Connecticut, but none greater than the $60 billion of unfunded pension liabilities and health care liabilities for our state employees. Promises that politicians made that taxpayers cannot afford to keep. So as governor, I will open up the contract with state employees. We will turn state employees from a defined benefit plan to a defined contribution plan. We will stop practices where their overtime is padded to calculate their pension so that state employees retire, making retirement into a pension than they actually earn. We will reform that system. We will make sure that our pension system is solvent. That's what Scott Walker did. We can also talk about ma mandate relief for our towns and cities. If the state is going to make you do something, they ought to put the money behind it. If they're not, we need real mandate relief, binding arbitration reform, all of that to give local property taxpayers relief from all of the mandates from the state. That's what Scott Walker did in Wisconsin. We can do it here in Connecticut as well. My mother, my mother-in-law, God rest her soul, was the treasurer of the state employees for me, Paul Brochu. And I learned a lot from Paul. I missed the right to work in Connecticut, but over the last ten months, if you look at my Facebook page, Wall for Governor, you'll see hundreds of union workers from the Department of Transportation, firemen, policemen, office and policy management putting their names on my wall saying we'll vote for you, Mr. Visconti, unless you won't fire us. There's a rumor that everyone here in the Republican Party is going to fire all state workers. Our economy is destroyed. Not one more house and not one more job lost in Connecticut. Attrition is one thing. You cannot alienate the union workers who are ready to jump ship. If I'm your governor, that's what I've told you. My door is open. You work for me. You do not work for the union steward. You do not work for the union. Boss. Don't alienate the union workers, they want it more. My mother grew up in Madison, Wisconsin. It's uh, my second favorite state in the union. So, uh, I know actually quite a bit about that state. And I think what, what happened in uh, Wisconsin can, a lot of the things can be applied here in Connecticut. First of all, the stranglehold the public sector unions have over policy in this state simply has to change. Uh, we cannot afford to keep spending and incurring future liabilities uh, that we are here. What, uh, what Governor Walker did in, in, in Wisconsin can certainly uh, be done here. And I think with strong, with strong leadership, which is what he did, he had a tremendous amount of courage. There were uh, people coming in and uh, millions of dollars being spent from all over the country and he stood his ground. So strong leadership uh, also here in Connecticut can make a huge difference. Uh, and I think that uh, 
When I talk about the Wisconsin moment here, people try and uh, twist that around the Democrats into uh, making this a right to work state. It's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is where people, uh, Republicans, and people who believe in the same principles we believe in end up electing leadership and taking over a state legislator and a state that's been known as being blue. Thank you. being someone who is not quick to write out a check. When Scott Walker was being recalled, I took my pen and checkbook out, I sent him a check. And I did that because I admired his courage and I appreciate what it's like to be demonized by the other side. Again, as a, a local elected official, we deal with unions on a regular basis. This is not new. We've had some tough discussions. Uh, discussions back and forth. You know, uh, state laws, the legislature, they pit local official against local official. And, you know, they expect us to, to cave in and take care of, take care of the patronage. You know, you can't do that at the local level. You have to stand in the arena with them. You have to gain their trust. You have to continue the dialogue. And you have to get them to understand. And sometimes you have to take very, very hard positions. You learn that when you when you live at the local level, uh, on the ground as we do. And so, while there are some things that we can learn from Scott Walker, uh, the place here in Connecticut is very different. The first thing we must do is take over the, late, the state legislature, because if you don't do that, it's a non-starter and it gets an awful lot tougher. So, as, as, a, as a, a governor or a candidate, I would advocate for another ticket. Mayor of the seventh largest city in the state of Connecticut with six collective bargaining units and with over 600 employees. I've already done a lot of the things that Scott Walker did. I didn't do it in the same manner, but my employees can't count their overtime expense of the pension. Our employees can't count uh, uh, and make other calculations of the pensions that artificially inflate, inflate them. Uh, our employees, uh, have a, we've eliminated retiree medical. Our employees have gone to a, a 401k style uh, contribution plan. Uh, we've done all those things together and we've worked hard to present a better and more rosy picture in terms of our city finances. But the other thing I just want to mention to you is the challenge that we have right now is that you don't have a governor that's giving you honest services in that room when they're negotiating with these unions. He doesn't represent you, the taxpayer. He represents the unions because he owes his job to them, the special interest groups of the state. So as taxpayers, you ought to be outraged that he would sit down and try to negotiate contracts that do absolutely nothing. $200 million to find uh, miraculous savings that simply don't exist, healthcare savings that haven't happened. That's not the leadership that a Biden administration is going to give you. Thank you.